Tissue Injury and Repair Inflammation is the standard initial response of the body to injury. Whether biological, chemical, physical, or radiation burns, all injuries lead to the same sequence of physiological events. Inflammation limits the extent of the injury, partially or fully eliminates the cause of the injury, and initiates repair and regeneration of damaged tissues. Necrosis, or accidental cell death, causes inflammation. On the other hand, apoptosis is programmed cell death, which is a normal step-by-step -step process that destroys cells no longer needed by the body. By mechanisms still under investigation, apoptosis does not initiate the inflammatory response. Acute inflammation resolves over time by the healing of tissue. If inflammation persists, it becomes chronic and leads to diseased conditions. Arthritis and tuberculosis are two examples of chronic inflammation. The suffix itis denotes inflammation of a specific organ or type. For example, peritonitis is the inflammation of the peritoneum, and meningitis refers to the inflammation of the meninges, which are the tough membranes surrounding the central nervous system. The four cardinal signs of inflammation are redness, swelling, pain, and localized heat. Upon tissue injury, damaged cells release inflammatory chemical signals that evoke local vasodilation. Vasodilation is the widening of the blood vessels. This increases blood flow and results in apparent redness and heat. In response to injury, mast cells present in the tissues degranulate and release histamines. Histamines are potent vasodilators. They increase the blood flow and recruit white blood cells to the site of the inflammation. The endothelium lining of local blood vessels becomes leaky under the influence of histamine and other inflammatory mediators. These leaky vessels allow neutrophils, macrophages, and fluid to move from the blood into the spaces of interstitial tissues. This excess liquid in the tissues causes swelling, or more properly called edema. These swollen tissues can squeeze pain receptors, causing the sensation of pain. Prostaglandins released from injured cells also activate pain neurons. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, reduce pain because they inhibit the synthesis of prostaglandins. High levels of these NSAIDs reduce inflammation. Antihistamines decrease allergies by blocking histamine receptors and, as a result, block the histamine response. After the containment of a tissue injury, the tissue repair phase begins. First, there is the removal of toxins and waste products from the site of the injury. Then, clotting or coagulation occurs, reducing blood loss from damaged blood vessels. Blood clotting forms a network of fibrin proteins that function to trap blood cells and bind the edges of the wound together. As the blood clot dries, a scab forms, reducing the risk of infection. Sometimes a mixture of dead leukocytes and fluid called pus accumulates within the wound. As healing progresses, fibroblasts from the surrounding connective tissue replace the collagen and extracellular material lost by the injury. Angiogenesis is the growth of new blood vessels and results in the vascularization of new tissue known as granulation tissue. The clot then retracts, pulling the edges of the wound together. As it slowly dissolves, the tissue is repaired. When a large amount of granulation tissue forms and capillaries disappear, a pale scar may be visible in the healed area. A primary union describes the healing of a wound where the edges are close together. When there is gapping in a wound, it takes longer to refill the area with cells and collagen. The process, called secondary union, occurs as the edges of the wound are pulled together by what is called wound contraction. 
When a wound is more than one quarter of an inch deep, sutures or stitches are recommended to promote a primary union and avoid the formation of a disfiguring scar. Regeneration is the addition of new cells of the same type, replacing the old ones that were injured. 